welcome back to another episode of The Process, where we spend just a little bit of time looking at stats now, so we can be just a little bit smarter watching games later. First up in this episode, we have the Malachi Smith from Dayton, not to be confused with the fifth-year senior Malachi Smith, spelled the same way, who is transferring from Chattanooga to Gonzaga this season. This Malachi Smith was fairly under the mainstream radar last season. Actually, both Malachis were, to be honest. But I felt like there may be some sneaky prospect potential here at some point in the future, if not this season. Let's get into his profile. Malachi Smith is a small point guard who put up pretty bonkers playmaking stats last season. He averaged 10.9 assists per 100 possessions, which lands him in the 100th percentile, even though technically the 100th percentile isn't even a real thing. Sorry, bad math joke. That's how impressive he was. Both his assist percentage and assist to turnover ratios were also in the 99th percentile. This is basically old school, pure point guard territory, considering his usage rate was just 20%. In addition to his passing stats, Smith also had a 3.7% steal rate, which clears the 2% threshold and is similar to that of Tyrese Hunter, whom we covered in the last episode. There's some room for optimism that Smith could be a solid, if not spectacular, shooter eventually. He shot exactly 40% on 53-point attempts, which is a small sample for sure, but the fact that he also shot close to 80% from the free throw line makes me a bit more optimistic. If Smith is to become a legit NBA prospect, clearly he's going to have to increase his three-point volume and show that he could be efficient while doing it. The pessimistic side of me sees that Smith shot a measly 25% on his mid-range attempts and 50% on layups, which makes me question his shooting touch. The only thing we can do right now is just wait for more data to trickle in. In terms of his tools, Malachi Smith appears to be somewhere in between Ruffin and Hunter having zero dunks in nearly 1,000 minutes, but a defensive rebounding percentage of 14.5%, which is very good, putting him in the 60th percentile there. He also had four blocks, which isn't spectacular, but it's not a red flag either. Before we move on to the next prospect, I want to mention that Malachi Smith is neither super old nor super young for his class, so that doesn't really help or hurt his case. Tucker DeVries from Drake popped on my Top Lines newsletter throughout last season, but didn't get much hype at all. At 6'7", 210 pounds with shooting and playmaking potential, that could definitely change this season. Let's get into his profile. Tucker checks most of the boxes I'm looking for in a potential 6'7 wing shooter as a freshman. He shot 34% on nearly 200 three-point attempts to go along with 78% from the line, 43% from mid-range, and 61% on layups. I'd like to see some incremental improvement, but really he shows enough promise that an eye test is warranted as much as checking up on the percentages this season. What I'll be looking for is primarily to see if he's merely a spot-up shooter or his potential to shoot off movement. Does he have a quick release? Things like that. But as far as the stats go, I like what I saw from him last season. Moving on to his playmaking stats, I'm also similarly encouraged here. Near 70th percentile in assist rate, with a turnover percentage in the 97th percentile, and consequently an assisted turnover ratio of 1.6, which was in the 90th percentile. Anytime I see a profile with this combination of shooting and playmaking at this size, I'm immediately intrigued. It reminds me a bit of Kevin Herter. There are other positives here. His steal percentage of 2% passes the smell test. He even blocked 26 shots, putting him in the 85th percentile for block rate and percentage. His rebounding stats seem good enough, if not spectacular. Additionally, it's interesting to note that 29 of his 30 layups were unassisted. Combined with his playmaking stats, makes me think his ball handling is pretty decent. I'm guessing he was more of a point guard in high school. There's only one real negative I can find here, and that is the fact that Tucker only had five dunks. That's not great at his size, so of course it raises some concerns about his athleticism and even his length. It will require eye testing to validate or reject his tools in terms of being above the NBA threshold, but you could probably tell I think it'll be worth the effort to follow him this season. If he can allay the few concerns I have, I can see DeVries knocking on the door of a first-round pick. The next prospect on my list is Harrison Ingram from Stanford. Ingram was a highly ranked recruit who flirted with the draft but ultimately decided to return, presumably to work on his game and improve his stock. Ingram did attend the combine last season and measured out at around 6'7 and 230 pounds, with a standing reach a little bit under 8 foot 8 and a wingspan a hair over 7 feet. In some sense, the biggest question Ingram will have to answer this season is whether he can be taken seriously as a big wing with enough skill and speed to play on the perimeter, or is he really just an undersized big? Clearly, what makes Ingram intriguing at all at his size starts with his passing ability. He ranked in the 86th percentile in assist rate and close to the 90th percentile in assist percentage. His assist to turnover rate was a very respectable 1.35, good enough to put him in the top quintile of all freshmen. Not surprisingly, given his size and bulk, Ingram also performed really well in a defensive glass, landing him in the top decile for defensive rebounding rate and percentage. 
That's basically where the good news stops, though. There are several issues that Ingram needs to work on, and perhaps some that will continue to hold him back from becoming a top tier or lottery prospect in 2023. Ingram only had 10 dunk attempts on the season and missed three of those. Having watched him a fair bit last season, it's clear that he lacks explosion, and we'll have to try to improve on that as much as he can. My guess, though, is it's not in the cards for him. He also shot just under 50% on layups. At his size, that's really poor, and probably hints at both touch and athletic issues. Ingram's stocks are similar, similarly underwhelming, coming in with a steal percentage under 2% and a block rate below the 50th percentile. If he could show some more rim protection, it would help his projection for sizing up to the 4 or even as a small 5 at times. Ingram's shooting stats were not where they need to be if I'm going to buy him as a big wing. He shot 66% from the free throw line, 31% on three-point attempts, and 32% from mid-range, all pointing in the same bad direction. Needless to say, his shooting is arguably the one area he has some ability to correct and could help his profile the most. I hope we see it, and I'm sure he does too. Next up is Deron Holmes. Not Deron, not Darren. This is going to give me trouble all season for sure. Holmes plays at Dayton with Malachi Smith, so you can get a bit of a two-for-one special if you catch their games this season. Last year's draft class was so loaded with bigs that Holmes most likely made the right decision to punt on his draft eligibility to this year. But statistically, at least, Holmes has all the makings of an athletic rim-running big on offense that at the very least can give you some rim protection on the other end. He ranked in the 99th percentile in block rate and 98th percentile in block percentage. He also had nearly 80 dunks, which makes it pretty obvious he's an explosive athlete on both ends. In terms of shooting, I'm not super optimistic for his three-point spacing potential, although obviously there's some chance he improves here. He shot under 60% from the free throw line on a fairly large sample of 137 attempts. He only attempted seven threes and made just one, and he shot 32% from mid-range on 72%. On the plus side, however, he did shoot nearly 70% on layups, which, which isn't bad. An area where Holmes appears sneakily interesting is his passing. His assist rate of 2.7 and assist percentage of 8.4% placed him in the thir- 43rd and 44th percentiles, respectively. His assist-to-turnover ratio was a hair above one, which is really impressive for a young big. These passing numbers are reminiscent of Robert Williams at Texas A&M, who had slightly more assists, but a worse assist-to-turnover ratio. It's actually not hard to imagine Time Lord as an optimistic comp for Holmes, at least by looking at their stats. One thing I haven't covered yet is rebounding. Holmes' rebounding stats look fairly pedestrian, and that might be a small area of concern, but generally speaking, I think people tend to overrate the importance of of rebounding. I'm much more interested to evaluate Holmes' defensive potential, especially how well he can defend on the perimeter, then I am concerned with his rebounding, which I have a feeling will be good enough for me in any case. So let's go over some action items for the four prospects we talked about in this episode. Let's start with Malachi Smith. I'll definitely be watching Dayton this season, primarily for Deron Holmes, but I'll keep an eye on Malachi Smith, who if if things break his way, could get himself into the prospect conversation. Otherwise, I have no doubt he's going to help Holmes big time this upcoming season as a table setter. And if he's never a legit NBA prospect, he'll definitely be a great college point guard for four years. For Tucker DeVries, assuming the shooting improves just a bit, it's all about evaluating his tools, athletic ability, and defensive translation to the next level. I will definitely pencil in a few Drake games this season to watch him make his case. Harrison Ingram needs to work on his shooting, plain and simple, to make a case for being a first-round prospect in my mind. Without that, it's just hard to project his role at the next level, or at least a role that sees him in a favorable light. For me, it's not so much about eye-testing Ingram, because I basically already know what he does well. I just really want to see the skill level, well, level up. Holmes is a ready-made NBA prospect if you look at his statistical profile. Where he lands in the draft is all about how he eye-tests for me. If he can convince me the defense is legit, I think we're talking about a mid-first-round potential. Only time will tell. Okay, folks, that's it for this episode. Please like and subscribe for more content. Leave comments if you have them, and I'll see you next time.